Chapter 2 of Whatever Happened to Penny Candy Tan Stoffel, The Romans, and Us Dear Chris, during the 1970s, most of Western civilization, and even some Eastern countries like Japan, experienced a double-digit inflation. Double-digit means that each year prices are rising at the rate of 10, a double-digit number, percent or more. For instance, during a double-digit inflation, a magazine which cost you a dollar last year would cost you a dollar ten or more this year. Inflation this serious and this widespread had not happened in the United States since this country became a nation, with the exception of the inflation of the Confederate dollar during the Civil War. However, it was almost this widespread about 20 centuries ago, during the days of the Roman Empire. I'll tell you about the trouble the Romans had. You'll see there's nothing new about inflation or recession. The Romans were plagued by them too. In fact, these were old problems when the Romans had them. The Greeks had things messed up five centuries before the Romans did. In Rome, it all started with the government. The Roman government behaved pretty much like any other government. It had public works projects like roads and bridge building. It had wars. It also had welfare programs. A welfare program is the practice of giving things to poor people. Modern governments also have welfare for rich people. That kind of welfare is called a subsidy. For instance, if you are a poor person and the government gives you food, money, medical care, or housing, that's welfare. If you are a rich person or a big corporation and the government gives you land, money, or buildings, that's a subsidy. Unfortunately, the Roman government had a problem. It ran up against a law of economics. A law of economics is like a fact of life. It's something you have to live with because you cannot change it. The law the Romans ran into is a big one. Its slang name is Tanstoffel. Sounds a lot like Tans Toffel, which means there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Tanstoffel means that nothing of value is free. Someone must pay for it, if not with money, then with time and hard work. For instance, not even air is free. People work hard and spend lots of money to keep it clean enough to breathe. Tanstoffel was a popular saying during the Great Depression, and it's becoming popular again. The Roman government wanted tools, land, and gravel for its roads, and it had to pay for these things. It wanted horses and weapons for its soldiers to fight wars, and it had to pay for them. It wanted food and clothing for its welfare programs, and it had to pay for them too. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. The Roman government needed lots of money to buy the things it wanted. The way all governments, including the Roman government, get the money they want is by taxing people. Taxing means taking money, by force if necessary, and that's what the Roman government did. Tax, tax, tax. Take, take, take. People do not like being taxed. They do not want the government to take their money. They hate taxes. Everyone does. The Roman people were no exception. The Roman government soon discovered a very unpleasant fact. When taxes get too high, people get mad enough to revolt and overthrow the government, as the colonists did during the American Revolution. The Roman government dared not raise tax any further, but it still needed money to pay for all the things it wanted. That was a tough problem, and most modern governments have the same problem today. How to get money without raising taxes. However, there was a solution. The Roman government discovered counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is the making of phony money. The usual way to counterfeit nowadays is to print phony money on a printing press. But 20 centuries ago, the printing press had not yet been invented. All money was metal coins, and the government had to make phony coins. This is how it was done. The main coin used in the Roman Empire was the denarius, 
which was 940 fine silver, 94% silver. When the tax collectors brought the coins into the Roman government's treasury, the government would have the coins clipped. Clipping a coin means shaving the edges off. The shavings from the clipped coins were used to mint new coins. The government would then have not only the clipped coins, but the new coins too. It had a lot more money to buy the things it wanted. But the Roman people were not stupid. They soon realized that some of their coins were too small and light. Some of the silver was missing. They either refused the clipped coins or they reduced the value. For instance, if you wanted a loaf of bread and the price was one denarius, the baker would either refuse to accept a clip coin or he would demand two clip coins as a substitute for one whole coin. In later centuries, people developed an easy method for telling if a coin was clipped. They had notches cut in the edges of the coins. The coins were reeded. Any clipped coin was easily recognized because the reading was gone. As you can see on your dimes, quarters, and half dollars, reading is still a practice today. Base metal coins like your pennies and nickels are not readed because no one ever clips them. But precious metal coins like dimes, quarters, and halves, which did contain silver until 1965, are readed. Our clad coins are readed so they will look like silver coins. Since reading made the clipping obvious, a new system of counterfeiting was started. When a denarius was brought into the treasury, it was melted down. Some base metal, like copper, was added in. The new coins were minted out of the mixture. The denarius might come into the mint being 94% silver, and then go out being only 84% silver. Since less silver was used in each coin, more coins could be made, and the politicians had more money to spend. Every year, coins were melted and remented with a little more base metal mixed in each time. This is called debasing the money, and it went on for many years. In 54 AD, a denarius was 94% silver. By 218 AD, it was down to 43%, and only 50 years later, it was less than 1%. Look at your half dollar. In 1964, it was 90% silver. Five years later, it was down to 40%. Today, it contains no silver. The Roman people knew their money was losing its silver, so whenever they got a coin with a lot of silver in it, they would save it. They would only spend low silver coins. The high silver coins were not used to buy things, while the low silver coins were used a lot. Only low silver coins circulated. High silver coins were hoarded, hidden away. Gresham's Law was in action. Gresham's Law is a law of economics which says, bad money drives good money out of circulation, out of use. In other words, people always save good money and buy things with bad money. They want to keep the good money and they want to get rid of the bad money. For instance, in 1965, Gresham's Law started working in the U.S. When the debased American coins were made, people saved the old silver coins and spent the new clad coins. The government's law says people are not allowed to reduce the value of their debased coins. If a coin says 25 cents, then it must trade at 25 cents, even if it's not made of silver. The silver coins all disappeared, and now only clad coins are used. The silver coins are all being saved by people who know that silver is more valuable than copper or nickel. You may know someone who has saved silver coins. Lots of people did, and that's what caused the coin shortage of the 1960s. Remember, the Roman government had to pay for what it bought, but it didn't want to raise taxes to get the money. So the politicians started counterfeiting. More about Romans in my next letter. Uncle Eric. And we'll go on with chapter three in the next video. Hey, please reach down, click like, and subscribe, and leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. I love you guys, and as Tigger says, ta-ta for now.